If you ever work with layer groups in Photoshop, you may have noticed that the top of your layers panel, the blending mode is not set to normal like any other layer. Instead, it's set to pass through mode and changing it from pass through to normal or any of the other choices can have the potential of radically changing the look of your image. Let's figure out what the heck that blending mode means and when you might want to change it. Here we have a simple document. I have a total of four layers. We have layer one, two, and three. Each one has some text of a different color. I'd like these letters to interact with each other. So I'm gonna click on the topmost layer, hold the shift key, and click on the bottom of the three layers. Then I'm gonna come up here and change the blending mode. I can use all sorts of different blending modes to get this text to interact, but I really want to get radically different colors where they overlap. So I'm gonna set it to difference mode, which is really gonna give me the look I want. Then if I want to organize this and get control really how it affects what's underneath, I'm going to throw it into a group. A group looks like a folder. And as long as you have more than one layer selected at the time that you create it, then all those layers will go inside the group. If you only have one layer, then you'd have to hold shift to get it to go inside the group. So here are those layers. These are still in difference mode. Now let's see the difference between changing from the default, which is pass through mode to normal. Notice it's completely different result. Uh, and that's because this, when it's set to pass through, which is the default setting, means make whatever you have going on in here act as if it's not in a group. So the group is only there for organization. The useful thing about the group is if you use the move tool, you only need to have the group active and suddenly you're moving everything that's inside. Or if you type command T, control T in Windows to transform, it's automatically working on everything that is inside that group. Whereas if this was not a group, I would have to manually select those layers and get them all selected before doing any of those things. But then if pass through mode means just use this as an organizational feature, kind of a convenience to make it so your layers might not look quite as uh, cluttered, then what does it mean when I set it to normal? Well, what that means is take the contents of this particular group and act as if you right clicked on it and you chose merge group. If you did that, anything going on within that group would have to be completed using only the contents of the group itself and whatever is found underneath the group would not affect what that merging looks like. So if I choose merge right now, take a look at it. The image changed. If I choose undo, it changed back. Why is that? Because difference mode is saying, where does this image look different than what is under it? And if there's white under it, it's going to reflect that. And if I go down here to the bottom layer and change its contents, I'm going to get a different result depending on what color I choose. But what I want to do is make it so I always get the same result and I want the result that looks as if I turned off the eyeball on that bottom layer and all I saw was the true contents of the group and not how it would usually interact with anything that's underneath it. And this is what I would get if I merged that group so it became a single layer. Well, that's also what I get when I click on the group and I change this from pass through to normal. Now in this weird looking image, that might not be as understandable. So let's go to a different one that might be a little bit easier to understand. Here I have the word thank you in one color. And I wanted to make it a little bit fancier than that. So I simply duplicated the layer and after duplicating it, I changed the color. I then used the move tool and made them so they don't perfectly overlap. And that's what I have here. It's just two that slightly overlap. Well, now what I'd like to do is make it so where these two colors overlap, they interact. I'll do that by changing the blending mode. And in my case, I'm gonna use multiply mode. Multiply mode means print like ink. So it's as if we're printing this color on top of this color only where they overlap. Well, here's the problem. If I were to put something else underneath this, like uh, let's say I were to put a texture. Well, one of those layers is in multiply mode. And the way blending modes work is when you're in multiply mode, it means make this layer print on ink onto the underlying image, meaning whatever that underlying image looks like, regardless of how many layers it's made out of. Well, what I'm gonna do is click on the group and change it from pass through, which lets that blending mode pass right through the bottom of the group and interact with those underlying layers. And I'm gonna set it instead to normal. Now, when it's in normal mode, that multiply mode only works within the layers that are inside the group and it cannot interact with what's underneath. 
that can become much more important when you want to do something like in here. Let's put this on a black background. Well, multiply mode ends up printing like ink. And what do you get if you print some sort of ink on top of black? Well, if it's a normal kind of ink like you'd use on a printing press, it's just going to get absorbed by the black. So let me end up putting this in here from normal back to pass through. And now you can see where those two areas don't quite work out. And so that might be more noticeable if I had a light color like yellow. Yellow, printing yellow ink on top of black just gives you black. But if you set this from pass through to normal mode, then that combination where it's using multiply mode is finished within the group. And then we can get the end result to apply normal mode. It's as if we let these use that blending mode, then we merged them together before applying this blending mode. But it's not just blending modes that are affected. So let's try a different document. Here's a frequent demo that I use to explain how red, green, and blue mode works in Photoshop. And this is where that blending mode of pass through can get in the way. In this case, I have red, green, and blue circles that are all in separate layers. If I were to move these circles and get them to overlap, they don't interact because each one of their layers is set to normal mode. But if I were to select these three layers and change the blending mode to a choice called screen, now they act like light. It's as if I had a red, a green, and a blue spotlight pointing at this image. Well, the problem with that is it's interacting with the photograph that is underneath. So most of the time I have to put whatever's under this as a layer full of black, which acts like there's no light. But if I simply click on a group then I've put these into and I change it from pass through so the blending mode does not pass through the bottom to normal. Now these things only interact as if they're made out of light with other layers that are found within that particular group. And so I can move them around and demonstrate, but I can have a different background where they're not interacting with the background. This is not just with blending modes though. I've done a similar demo before when I talked about a special set of check boxes. What the check boxes are is if you have a layer active, you can go to the letters FX and choose blending options. There are check boxes here for red, green, and blue. And most of the time, all three of them is turned on, but if I only turn on one of them, then it ends up making it so that layer only affects the red that makes up my picture. Well, what I've done here is I have three copies of this particular image stacked right on top of each other. And I've changed those blending modes. So one of them is set to red, the other one is set to green, and the third one is set to blue. When I have the group that they're contained within set to pass through mode, that's going to become an issue because now when I move these layers, I used to be able to show how I could separate this into red, green, and blue by pulling the layers like this, but it's interacting with the image that's underneath and I don't want it to. So I'm going to click on the group that these are contained within and change it from the default of pass through to normal mode. So now, this particular layer has only the red checkbox turned on. And so now it's only affecting the red information that makes up the image. The next one over, if I pull it, it affects green and the third one affects blue. Since that group is set to normal mode, it's not interacting with the layer that's underneath. And so now I can show how your image would be made out of red, green, and blue, and how if I were to line these images back up, that I can end up with a full color image. And I'm not limited to demonstrating this on the typical black background because I can get the contents of this particular group to not interact with what's underneath. And that's only by putting those layers into a group and changing from the normal pass-through mode to normal. Now that talked about the red, green, and blue checkboxes. That's not all. There's a whole bunch more that is affected by that blending mode. For instance, here I have a texture in a layer. And if I turn on that layer and show you just the contents of that layer alone, you can see it's kind of a linen texture. But then I went to the letters FX and I chose blending options. And let me turn on my other layers first. But if I were to go in there, I moved these to say, make this only show up in the brightest portion of the image. In the underlying image, which means all the layers contained underneath, make this linen texture not show up wherever the underlying image is between black in this brightness level. So it's only showing up in the really brightest areas. And I can see that right here where the white was in the image. But if I move these circles over and you look at the image that's underneath, 
you're gonna find that it's also showing up in the really brightest areas there because the way blending sliders work is they think about the underlying image. And so that means all these layers that are underneath. Well, here I have a, a group and that group does not have the default setting of pass through. Remember, we changed it to normal. Let's see how that affects those blending sliders. I'm gonna drag this into that group so it'll become the topmost layer and suddenly it looks completely different. And that's because now that particular group is set to normal mode and that means those blending sliders pay attention to that. Usually the blending sliders would be able to look through all the layers that are underneath and interact with them all. But now it can only interact with the layers that are found within this group. It might feel a little weird that it showed up out here. Well, that's where the group had no content. And therefore this is where it's gonna show up because it's looking at it underneath and saying only show up where it's not dark. Well, if that area contains nothing, which is what it has in this particular case, then it can't figure out where it should show up or disappear using the blending slider, so it just shows up normally. But that's not all. This also works with adjustment layers. So here I have an image with an adjustment layer on top of it. And that adjustment layer has a mask that's been painted on. And if I were to use my move tool and reposition this, you'll see that it's an adjustment layer called hue and saturation, and it's making an area close to black and white. And if I put that on top of the picture, that was mainly making part of my kitchen over here, so you can't tell that we have green cabinets in the kitchen. And it just happens to be that I painted beyond the edge of the photograph. Well, if that photograph and the adjustment layer is inside of a group, when the group is set to pass through, it means allow this adjustment layer to pass right through the bottom of that group and affect all layers that are found below as well. Well, if I change this from pass through to the choice of normal, now that adjustment layer is also not allowed to pass through the bottom of this particular group. Instead, it can only affect the layers contained within the group. Now for me, I don't use it in that particular way much at all, because what I could have done instead is if I didn't use a group at all, if I just take these two layers and pull them out of the group, I'll just put them down here, lower in my layers and throw that group away. What I could have done instead and what I would have done most of the time is when I'm in an adjustment layer, if I were to come into the actual adjustment itself, there's this little down pointing arrow. And if I click that, it means clip it to the layer that's below and therefore it can only affect the contents of that particular layer. Even if I had multiple layers and I wanted this adjustment layer to affect just those particular layers, then what I could do is come in here and just say, well, here's the layers that are sitting inside of a group and I could take my adjustment layer and put it directly on top of the group. So it's not contained within it, it's just directly above it. Well, then I can click that exact same icon to say clip it to the group. And now the adjustment layer would only affect the layers contained within the group and would not go anywhere beyond it. And so the vast majority of the time, that's what I'd end up doing with adjustments. There would be an occasion when I'd really find it to be useful to, instead of using pass through, through mode, use normal, but it's a rare occurrence. So groups in Photoshop are usually defaulted to pass-through mode, and that's because most people use groups just for organization. You're gonna take a few layers, throw them in a group, and then you know if that group is active, you can use the Move tool, and it'll move all the layers contained within. If you were to use transformations, it would affect all the layers inside as long as the group is active. Or you could drill into the group and work on the individual layers as well. But some people want to go beyond that. And then if you change the blending mode from pass-through mode to normal, now you're saying let's not just use this as an organizational feature within Photoshop to organize our layers. Let's instead limit what blending modes, what adjustment layers, and what RGB checkboxes, what uh, blending sliders will do. Let's restrict all of those kinds of things. Let's in fact make it so whatever is inside of that group, it's as if it's being merged together. 
kind of like also converting it to a smart object because it would do the same thing where it takes the contents of whatever you had selected and acts like they're merged together. Well, that's what it thinks about when it thinks about that blending mode at the top of your layers panel. You don't have to set it to normal mode. Normal just means act as if these layers are merged together and then use normal mode. But you can just as easily change it to multiply or anything else you want. But just know it's going to take all the layers that are inside that group, act as if they're merged together, and then apply that blending mode. If you want to know more about the interesting features of layers, check out these videos.